All right, let's get into my first guest of the evening. And I believe I am joined with Matt and Matt from Michigan-based band Harbor Cold right now. How's it going, fellas? How's it going, Kenny? I'm good, man. Thank you so much for being on the show and being on on a few Thanks days' notice. Um, yeah, well, Jeremy Porter's a, a great dude, and so it was really nice for him to hook me up. Yeah, so shout out to Jeremy. Um, he was supposed to be the original guest of tonight's show, yeah, but man. due uh, to circumstances. Jeremy Porter, Detroit, Detroit's finest. Yeah, that guy. the 313, the area code, That's 313. Right. Um, so are you fellas also from Detroit as well? No, our, our band is based up in the Lansing area, so we're about, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes away from Jeremy, but I'm in another band called Stick Arounds. Okay. And we've played with Jeremy for a number of years and been uh, tight pals with those guys. They're uh, they're all the, the two coats are all great dudes. Awesome, awesome. So, with all that being said, you fellas have a new album on the way in October. Yeah. Um, and you also have some shows coming up in the fall, um, as well. And we will get to all of that in just a bit. But first things first, how did Harbor Coat, um, how did y'all became the game? What's the story behind how y'all um, got together? Well, um, so like I mentioned, I'm in another band called The Stick Arounds, and two of the guys that are my rhythm section in Harbor Coat um, are from the, from the Stick Arounds, and uh, we're like a, that band is sort of a Lansing-based, like, power pop band, and we've all all of those dudes have been in bands for a really long time. Like we're, we're kind of like veterans of the scene. We're all in our forties and a couple of us are even into our early fifties. And we've been around for 25 or 30 years in different bands. And like 12 or 13 years ago, we just decided, you know, we love all this stuff. So let's get together. And, uh, and so that kind of happened. And then I had a bunch of songs that didn't quite fit the mold for uh, the stick arounds three or four years ago. And, um, I was just going to make like a bedroom record and uh, a buddy of mine named Isaac Vandersher, who's in a great band called the, the hat matter um, was like, you can't just, you can't just like put these out on band camp. Like they're too good. He was like, let me, let me produce your record. So in uh, almost about two years ago this week, we put out our first record called brutal gravity, which really was kind of like, now it wasn't even like a live band thing. We just kind of put it together in uh, studios around town and in our houses. And then once that, once that happened, we, we realized we had something kind of special. And so we put a live band together and we played a handful of shows. And then of course COVID happens and uh, the world kind of shuts down. And so we went to work and made another record. And um, that, that record is uh, it's coming out on October one, like you said, and um, you're actually catching me tonight at practice. We took a, we took a break so that I could talk to you. Well, I appreciate that. Appreciate y'all doing that. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I got a chance to, you know, from what Jeremy has told me about you fellas, I got a chance to give y'all a listen. Um, I've heard some songs. I got a sneak peek, per se, of the new album. Um, and yeah. um, some of the songs I've heard thus far has sounded amazing. Has sounded incredible. Thank you. Um, including the lead single, which is out right now, Help Me Out Somehow, um, from Harbor Colt. Um, you can check that out on all the platforms. I'll see that you guys also have a band camp as well. Uh, so you can go you. Yeah. and um, go buy it there as well. And you know, when you buy it from band camp, that, that makes it even more special. Because, um, you know, band camp, yeah, they I mean, do great things. They do, and obviously the you know the first Friday thing that they're doing where they waive all their fees is really great. They started that during pandemic to kind of help artists out, and that's certainly something that we all appreciate. The other thing that's really great about Bandcamp is like there's this kind of like social connection to it where we're like we've met people who have found us either through a friend or just by hearing us somewhere out of the ether, like on a radio show or a blog or a playlist somewhere, and like we basically develop a relationship with these folks and then they follow you. I mean, this happens to bands all over and they follow you and they kind of get excited about what you're doing. 
And so like we had, when, when I put the new Harbor cut record up for pre-order uh, a week or two ago, whenever that was, um, that it went live, we had three or four folks, you know, from out of state, like within the first couple hours, pick it up who, you know, had gone like, they've never seen us before. They, you know, all they know is the first record, but like they feel a connection to what we're doing. And it's, when you're doing all this stuff on your own, it's super gratifying to have that happen. It's really, it's like a, a special little connection that happens and you sort of make new friendships and it's, it's super awesome. Definitely super awesome when indie acts like you fellas get that support and, and to get, it makes the build up leading towards this album release even more fun as well. Um, so y'all name this album. Joy is elusive. Um, talk about working on this album um, and what made y'all name this record Joy is elusive. What's the story? What's the background behind that title? Yeah, that's a, that's actually kind of an interesting story. So, um, uh, a little over three years ago, I built a little, uh, little shed out in my backyard where I have a studio and that's become the place where we do a lot of recording for these records and, um, a lot of the rehearsals and the prep work and that kind of thing. And when I was in the process of kind of starting writing songs for what I thought were going to become the next Harbor Coat record, I, I heard, I, I got that phrase in my head, Joy is Elusive, and I actually wrote it down on a sheet of paper with a Sharpie. And uh, I, I tacked it to the wall above the computer in my studio. And so I looked at it every day that I was out there. And that kind of became the sort of the mantra for how to put this record together. And I'm a guy who probably like a lot of your listeners um, has for a long time struggled with anxiety and depression. And, you know, during pandemic, especially, you know, I think we were all feeling that even if we've never felt it before. And so it felt like, um, we've all been at that moment where things seem a little hopeless, where they feel like maybe the darkness has come in and we're not going to turn the corner. And I kind of wanted to sort of talk about those moments in a really honest way on this record. And I do it through a lot of situations where they're, they're done in the third person and they're not about my own experiences per se, but they're about characters that I've written about, or they're almost like little short stories in a way. And then um, I had all these songs written by the middle of the summer and uh, we're lucky enough to have a family cabin about an hour and a half from where I live. And uh, we were getting ready to go up there in the middle of September last year. And really suddenly at the end of August, my dad died. And that was completely out of nowhere. He hadn't been sick or anything. And um, I really wondered whether, whether or not we were going to make the record. And my family and my friends all kind of talked me into doing it. And we went to this cabin for a week and it was a really you know, it's a, it a beautiful thing. It was a really therapeutic experience. And so I feel like in a way that there's some kind of uh, essence to that on the record. Like you can almost feel that that's kind of the, the environment we were working in. And we, we basically recorded the vast majority of the sort of the structure of the record in five or six days at this cabin in the, in the woods next to the lake. And that's, that's kind of, I guess that's sort of the backstory of, of you know these songs and they're all in one way or another kind of about that subject but they're not all about anxiety or all about depression or all about what i've gone through it's you know i hope it's a more holistic and kind of well-rounded approach to, to deal with some of those subjects my thoughts and prayers go out to your family for your loss from last year oh thank you so much man um, i really appreciate that i mean and, a lot. you know 2020 was definitely a challenging year for all of us with this pandemic, yep. being at home, wondering if we was going to get back to where we are now. And even when we're right. back to where we are now, there's still more challenges ahead. Um, That's absolutely right. So, you know, just music just has a way of just helping people through trying times like this. So I'm glad that you've um fellas put putting this album together and and for the songs i've heard so far it's just incredible um just oh, get man, a good feel so much. and uh i'm glad that jeremy introduced me to to harper cole because 
you guys have a lot of a good going for you and um, October 1st is going to be a very special day. Um, not only are oh, y'all releasing... Thank you so much, Kenny. That means a lot. Thanks. And not only will the album will be out, Jorah is elusive on that day. Y'all are going to begin your autumn tour at Record Lounge at Lansing, Michigan. So let's talk about these shows um, that's coming up. Yeah. In October, November, and even December, you're going to be in Michigan, Illinois. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much mostly Illinois and Michigan. But um, how's the feel, man? Just yeah, got, getting back on the road. We, yeah. one, uh, we got one Milwaukee show in there, so I guess we get to count Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, I yeah, was so like, Milwaukee, um, Michigan? I'm like, ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the one drag is we all have day jobs. <laughs> So we can only really do the weekend thing right now. Right. Um, and a lot of our schedules are tied to the school year. So things are kind of gearing up on two fronts. You know, kids are coming back to school and uh, we've got a couple of teachers in the band and my job is tied to education. And so it's, you know, it's all, we're all kind of based in that world a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, the fall shows are going to be amazing. Um, the, the record lounge show is, is kind of a special one because not only is it our, is it our first show, but um, it'll be a little different. We're going to do a quieter, like, in-store set. It won't be like a full, loud rock band with amps and everything. And uh, that store is the only record store in the state of Michigan that's owned by a woman. And it's a dear friend of mine named Heather Frary. And uh, Heather's had that store for a number of years. And uh, we just thought that'd be a really good way to kind of start things off. And then uh, October 2nd is the Avenue, which is sort of our home base um, in Lansing. And that's kind of where people gravitate to and uh we're feeling really excited about that and then we've got you know we've got a show in ferndale which is a suburb of it's directly north of detroit just a couple miles and we we expect that to be a really big big night we're um frankly we're we're kind of hoping that one's going to sell out we think we think that might happen um and then we've got we've got friends in chicago and in milwaukee that we're going to go see and they're going to play with us and we're going to hit a bunch of other spots in michigan and should be a hell of a fall, man. Yeah, it's the shows and just get new music out. You know, getting to perform this mu uh, music in front of crowds. That's definitely going to be amazing. So um, check them out. Um, Harper Colt. They are on social media. They are on face. They are on Facebook at Harper Colt. They are on Instagram at Harper Colt underscore music. You can check the whole list of shows and arenas coming to the Michigan area um, and the area near you. They're going to be at Chicago. Um, so this is going to be there. You know, they're going to get a chance to perform this new music in front of y'all. So um, all that energy. Yeah, that now, yeah. Now, Kenny, where are you in uh, Kentucky? I live in Lexington, Kentucky. And that's a place we're looking to get to um, after the new year. We're uh, that's a that's a spot we're we're looking to get down to. We have we have some uh, some feelers out to maybe do like a like a Columbus Lexington run kind of thing. Um, so um, all right, I'm I'm probably going to screw. Is it Al's? Is that the is that the the place to play? Al's Bar in Lexington. Yes. 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 Okay. So. Jeremy told me really good things about this and so have some other folks. So we're looking at maybe doing a, doing a, like a weekend run down there, maybe in like uh, January, February, if the weather's not too crappy. So, okay. Okay. You know, be sure, be sure your, your local folks are giving us a, a follow on the socials and we can, uh, we can keep them updated. Yeah, man. And if y'all are able to make it um, next year, I'll definitely check y'all out in person. That, that would be dope. I know Perfect. Jeremy, he, for what he told me, he's going to be at Lexington in a couple of months. So I'll get a chance to meet him um, for for sure. So uh, this, this is um, incredible. Um, I'm definitely enjoying um, Harper Coat here. Um, go get the album. Joe is elusive. October the 1st. Then they're going to be on tour um, for, for the season, for the fall season. And they're going to be in Lansing, Fordale, Chicago, Milwaukee, um, 
they're gonna be all over Michigan. Let's just put it that way. So uh, if you, that's right. So it's going. And you know what, Michigan, in, Michigan in the fall is beautiful. People should take a road trip, man. You know, see some see some see some leaf color and come see Harbor Coast. Now, I, I've out. been I've been to Michigan before. I've been uh, actually twice. Actually, where, um, where you been? I've been to Detroit. I've been there nice. twice. Um, I got a that's a, a much that's a much maligned city. That's a that that's a hell of a place. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I love it. I love it. It's my second home. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the um, Detroit. Shout out to Michigan. Absolutely. Um, I, I got. I look. I love Detroit Pistons. I'm, I'm a Pistons <laughs> fan. Um, I like the the Red Wings and the NHL. I may not be the most biggest hockey person, but as far as if you give me a team to root for, it's the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, given their prestige and championships in the past. That's um, right, man. So you know. Michigan. It's been a long. It's, yeah. I don't follow hockey much anymore. It's been a long time since they've been good, but uh, yeah. the city never. The city never disappoints. They uh, they keep coming and they keep supporting, pa- even when that team is awful. So very yeah. very passionate fan base in sports, um, football, basketball. They, yeah, that, that whole city's kind of cuckoo for it. I've been a I've been a lifelong Tiger fan, and um, it's a real treat to get to watch uh, Miguel Cabrera hit his 500 home run this week. So yeah. That was fun. And I did yeah. see the Detroit Pistons had like a a, a, a custom made jersey to celebrate um, his five hundred home one. Yeah, they're that's... they're pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So Miguel Cabrera, he's meant so much to Detroit. He's pretty much the biggest star in Detroit right now. Now, Kay Cunningham of the Pistons, number one pick, he might be the future of Detroit. I think but, I think uh, that's coming. Yeah. And if you're a Pistons fan, you got you got bright days ahead. I think. Yeah, yeah. The guy Cunningham, Gaza, National Player of the Year, and the number one overall pick. That's uh, yeah. a very young team to yeah. look forward to. To keep an eye on. So here's hoping, here's hoping they don't screw it up, right? Yeah, don't don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Pistons fans like myself will be waiting a long time to get to be this excited, leading towards. The yeah. beginning yeah, of they the season. Been, they, haven't been, they haven't been good for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking 2002, the last time they won a championship. That, you know. Was that 02? I was thinking it was later than that. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had that, you know, you had that whole, uh, that whole resurgence where they were good for a couple of years and, yeah. and found a way to win a, a title. And then, you know, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to remember the bad boys. So. I love the bad yeah. boys, Isaiah. Yeah, I Joe haven't Dumas. watched the I haven't watched the Malice at the Palace doc yet. I don't I don't think I want to. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think I want to watch that. It's, it's 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 probably you know, and the one thing that people easily forget about that particular game is that the Pistons got destroyed that night. It it was a yeah. blowout. Game got out of yep. hand. One on test acting the fool. And next thing you know, everybody's in the stands fighting. Like, yeah. Yep. I don't want to relive that neither. So, yeah. uh, no. But what I do want to relive and what, what I'm looking forward to in the future is October 1st. Harper Cole. Thank you. Joy is elusive. Go get it. Go stream their latest single, Help Me Out Somehow. Very fitting title because you will be doing good justice by supporting these local and independent artists um because we don't know where this pandemic gonna take us but and we don't know how many opportunities these artists gonna get to perform so if you're able to go to these shows just be safe out there do what you gotta do uh so um, i think that's a i think that's a fabulous message and i think the other message that i would give is you know if it's us great and if it's another band go see them yeah. If you don't you don't know what's going to happen around the corner. We just don't know. So be safe. Obviously get vaccinated. Wear a mask if you have to. Go see some bands. Um, live music is a special thing, and uh, I sure missed it when it was away. So, yeah. man, it's... Kenny, thank you so much. This has been uh, super fun, and I, I appreciate the love and, and how much you're enjoying the record. And I hope, uh, 
you know, I hope uh, we can talk again. Yeah, um, thank you again for taking the time um, off the bench practice for doing this. Um, tell the fellas I said what's up, and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, man. Yeah, man, you too. We'll uh, we'll talk.